Hi and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name's Lee. Okay, so today I want to talk about the meeting between the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov and the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Now, Lavrov was in China to attend a summit um, a, to do with Afghanistan and the countries that border Afghanistan and how those countries are going to help uh, Afghanistan rebuild from the destruction to their country and economy by the US 20-year occupation. But during the time that Lavrov's, Lavrov was in China, he had a one-to-one -one meeting with Wang Yi to discuss the China-Russia relationship. And I'm just going to refer to some things that were said um, in that meeting, and this is from the Chinese readout of the meeting. So, first of all, Wang Yi said, China-Russia relations have withstood the new test of evolving international landscape, remained on the right course and shown resilient development momentum. Both sides are more determined to develop bilateral relations and more confident in advancing cooperation in various fields. China is ready to work with Russia to act on the important consensus reached by the two heads of state and promote China-Russia relations in the new era to higher levels. So, basically, any doubt that... Um, other countries had, i.e. the US, the Europe, who've been desperately trying to split China and Russia apart, are going to be very disappointed. It's obvious from Wang Yi's statement that China and Russia are starting to work more closely together. And this is probably, I would imagine, a direct result of um, the bullying and the sanctions that America have imposed on not just China, but also now Russia. So they're kind of, it seems that China and Russia are for, forming some sort of alliance, um, you know, to, to counteract the American sanctions on them. And uh, Wang Yi refers to the meeting just before the Olympic Games, of the joint statement that Russia and China made about that cooperation. So I think this is, is really um, interesting to see that although what's happened, um, Russia and China are still going to maintain their cooperation over many, many issues. And in that same meeting then, Lavrov went on to say, at the critical moment of the development of the international situation, the heads of state of Russia and China have maintained strategic communication and played important roles in advancing the steady development of Russia-China relations and promoting greater multipolarity in the world. Russia is ready to work with China to take solid steps to implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of state, continuously strengthen high-level strategic cooperation and deepen mutually beneficial cooperation between the two sides in various fields. At the same time, in the international and multilateral arena, the two sides should actively advance the process towards greater multipolarity, oppose hegemonism and power politics, and safeguard the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. So again, Lavrov here is echoing that the um, relationship between Russia and China is strong. It seems as though he's suggesting that there's been a lot of dialogue between uh, Russia, um, Russia's Vladimir Putin and President Xi Jinping. Um, it appears that they have kept regular contact although they have not publicly, um, it has not publicly made aware. It seems that there's a lot of communication. I think, again, this is to, you know, um, they, they see the, the world is changing and that um, Russia, sorry, and that the USA are not going to remain um, this unipolar 
sort of lawmaker around the world for, for much longer. And then Wang Yi went on to say, the international situation has entered a period of turbulence and transformation with the world experiencing profound changes unseen in a century. And again, I think this is a, a statement that's saying, look, the world is changing. It's no longer going to be dominated and controlled by the US. Um, you know, other areas are sort of rising. China is a much more powerful economy now, and the US are not gonna be able to go around and bullying other nations like they have done in the past in this unipolar world order that has been uh, imposed by the US is coming to an end. He then goes on to say the Ukraine issue has a complicated historical context. It is both an outburst of long built up tensions over Europe's security problems and an outcome of Cold War mentality and bloc confrontation. Under the current situation, we support Russia and Ukraine in overcoming the difficulties to continue with the peace talks, support the positive outcomes reached in the negotiations so far, support the de-escalation of tensions on the ground and support the efforts made by Russia and other parties to prevent a large scale humanitarian crisis. In the long run, lessons should be learned from the Ukraine crisis. The legitimate security concerns of all parties should be addressed based on the principles of mutual respect and indivisible security and a balanced, effective and sustainable European security architecture needs to be built through dialogue and negotiation so as to achieve enduring stability in Europe. Uh, I think this is basically Wang Yi saying that um, they see the situation has arisen because um, Russia's legitimate security concerns were not addressed by NATO and that um, a lot of the blame for, for the um, situation now is squarely at the feet of NATO and the US, US being the most powerful nation within NATO. NATO have continually expanded eastward and ignored Russia's security concerns, and that is what has led to the situation we are now in. So my opinion on this is that the US have been trying very hard to split China and Russia apart, and it's clear from this meeting and the statements that have been made that that has not happened. It's actually driving Russia and China closer together. And it's very interesting that the foreign ministers of both China and Russia have visited India in the last few days. Um, India have, have sort of shown that they're not standing together with the USA um, and Europe over the policies towards sanctions on Russia. And indeed, India have purchased some large cargoes of oil from Russia and they have actually paid in rubles. And they've also worked on a mechanism which is now in place for a ruble-rupee trading relationship. Um, I think the USA thought they had India squarely on their side with the formation of the Quad, but that doesn't seem the case. And I'd also like to mention that when the Europe and, and the USA mentioned the world is united against Russia, that is strictly not true. When they say the world, they mean Europe, the USA, Canada, Australia, and Japan. Pretty much all the other nations have not imposed sanctions. There might be the odd small one like Singapore, but very few have followed um, the path of the EU and the US by imposing sanctions on Russia. And it seems to me more and more of those other countries and nations are now starting to pivot away from the US um, toward China, who tend to bring um, you know, investment and trade to a lot of those countries with, without condition. You know, when, when the US involves itself in all these countries, there's always conditions. And if then those countries don't agree with the US, the US tends to try and uh, sort of regime change or it imposes a, a lot of sanctions on those countries. I think, I think the world is getting fed up of this and just before I finish up this video, I want to talk about Europe. Now, there's the sort of voices in the leadership of Europe that 
um, because they haven't got China to, to impose sanctions on Russia, that Europe should be distancing itself from China. And I think the, the European Union is very careful here because um, they've already got huge economic problems of their own. Inflation is surging in Europe. Um, they are now trying to cut themselves off from Russian energy. So the last thing they need is, is to be, um, you know, uh, falling out with China over trade. In 2021, the European Union's trade with China was larger than that of the US. So the last thing now the European Union need is to be getting involved with sanctions on China, uh, which the US is sort of now talking about. The US are much less dependent on Russia. The US are very dependent on China, of course. A huge amount of, of fit both finished goods and raw materials and also um, components are made in China that, that are um, used in the American market. So I think, I think the, 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 the European Union and the US need to now tread very, very carefully. But it's obvious from the meeting that Russia and China are moving close together, which is not what the USA wanted. It's apparent that sort of both China and Russia think that the world is moving towards a more multipolar world and away from an American dominated unipolar world. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think in the comments. That's my thoughts. But as always, for now, take care.